Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Offspring's Revenge, the 5 mana Mardu enchantment saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile target a red, white or black creature card from your graveyard and create a token that's a copy of that card except it's a 1-1 and it gains haste until your next turn. So pretty interesting way of reanimating creatures. So if we want to build around Offspring's Revenge, we need to make sure that the creature we reanimate has a powerful enter a battlefield ability or maybe a powerful effect when a creature is attacking so the tagline for this deck would be small creatures with big abilities and which creature has a bigger ability than Dracoseth? normally a seven mana seven seven legendary dragon with flying and when Dracoseth attacks it deals four damage to any target and three damage to each of up to two other targets so it can deal up to 10 damage with its fire breathing ability so even if we reanimate Dracoseth as just a one one flyer it is still quite powerful and then another creature we don't mind reanimating with the offspring's revenge is the harmonious archon normally a six mana four five archon with flying saying non-archon creatures have a base power and toughness three three and when the harmonious archon enters the battlefield we create two one one white human creature tokens so if we reanimate the Archon with Offspring's Revenge, we only get a 1-1 Harmonious Archon, but we still get two 3-3 three, three humans thanks to the Archon's ability, so we still get a lot of power and toughness for the one card. And Harmonious Archon also has a good synergy with the Dracoseth, because sometimes the opponent will have a creature out that survives the 4 or the 3 damage, but with Archon we just turn those creatures into 3-3s, three so they're within range of Dracoseth's fire-breathing ability to take them out. And then another creature that synergizes quite well with the Offspring's Revenge and the Harmonious Archon is Cavalier of Flame as a 5 mana 6 5 elemental knight and for 1 and a red creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain haste until end of turn and when the cavalier enters the battlefield we get to discard any number of cards and draw that many cards and also when the cavalier dies it deals a bunch of damage equal to the number of lands in our graveyard so we also end up uh, looting quite a bit and discarding quite a few lands so the ability when the cavalier dies is actually quite relevant in this deck as well but we're mainly interested in the discarding since we can dig towards more action and also the ability to pump our team since we can potentially reanimate Harmonious Archon with the Offspring's Revenge, but of course the tokens themselves won't have haste, but if we have a Cavalier of Flame in play we can activate the ability before declaring attackers, and then those human tokens will also be able to attack, and of course uh, pumping a bunch of tokens with the plus one plus so is also quite nice. So all three of these creatures have quite a bit of synergy with each other. So this is the main idea behind the deck. Of course we still need a way of discarding the Archon and Dracoseth so they end up in the graveyard in the first place. And that's where these 10 looting effects come in handy. We've got a full playset of Cathartic Reunion which as an additional cost we have to discard two cards and then draw three. We've got two copies of Thrill Possibility, as an additional cost we have to discard one, and we draw two, but it's an instant. And we also have two copies of Rix Mani Reveler, as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two creature that when it enters the battlefield makes us discard a card and then draw a card, and we can also spectacle it for two a black and a red, and then discard our entire hand and draw three, although we won't be spectacling it very often. And then we also have two copies of Honor the God Pharaoh, which is a 3 mana sorcery version of Thrill, but we also get to amass one and maybe get a chum blocking 1-1 one -one zombie token. The reason for this weird split is, of course, Cathartic is the one that digs the deepest and can potentially discard both Archon and Dracoseth at the same time. And then we have uh, two copies of the Reveler because having a creature is nice in the early game. Can maybe chum block, soak up some damage, maybe attack down a Narset, which is quite annoying since it prevents us drawing cards. And then later in the game we can also reanimate it with Offspring's Revenge and still get a discard draw effect out of it. And then the reason we're not playing the full playset of Thrill Possibility and instead have these two copies of Honor the God Pharaoh is that if you look at the curve we don't have very many 3-drops and I found myself not spending all my mana on turn 3 very often. So instead we get to cast Honor instead of Thrill on turn 3 and get that free 1-1 one -one token from the Amass so we can also maybe chum block with it and soak up a bit of damage so we can survive until the late game. And then we also need some sweepers to stay alive long enough to cast all these expensive cards. So we've got two copies of Deafening Clarion to deal three to everything. And then the full playset of Shattered Sky to destroy all creatures. And then after getting killed over and over again by Zenith Flare out of the cycling decks, I decided to add four copies of The Wanderer to the deck. 
which has a passive ability to prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. So if we control the Wanderer, they can't use Zenith Flare to burn us out, and they need to deal with the Wanderer first instead. And then a minus two can also exile target creature with power four or greater, which can also be amazing if they control a giant flourishing fox. And of course, this also has plenty of applications in other matchups. So the Wanderer also has this other nifty combo in the deck with Commanded Red Horde, which is a 6 mana sorcery. We choose any number of target creatures and or Planeswalker cards in graveyards, including the opponent's graveyard, and then Commanded Red Horde deals damage to us equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards and put them on the battlefield under your control. But if we control the Wanderer, it prevents all that damage, so we get to reanimate whatever we want with Commanded Red Horde without taking any damage, so that can also be a fun 2 card combo in the deck. And then quickly going over the mana base, we have 4 copies of Fable Passage alongside 4 planes, 4 swamps and 4 mountains, 4 Sacred Foundry, and then 4 Savai Trium. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing an unknown opponent. Um, yeah, I mean if we draw Looting Effect here, get rid of the Dracoseth, maybe the Command. And then we've got Sweeper into Revenge. Turn one Guide Mother, so it could be blue white flyers or mono white aggro. I uh, can probably afford to fetch up a swamp first here. Alright, blue white flyers confirmed. So the shatter should be quite good. Hushbringer does stop a couple of our ETB effects, but doesn't stop Dracoseth. Another Hushbringer. So I'm happy enough wiping the board, especially now that we drew another one. Haven't found any discard effects yet to put Dracoseth in the graveyard. Healer's Hawk, sure. Alright, Cavalier can help me discard a bunch of stuff here, and now that the Hushbringer is gone, the ability is not prevented. Wonder is not going to be great, Dracoseth can go, and Command can go. And next turn it's time for Revenge. And some people would say revenge is best served cold, but Dracoseth disagrees. Alright, and that does it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Numori deck, so probably a Mutate deck. Well, we've got a couple of reunions to discard these, and Shatter's very good in the matchup, so... Seems like a fine hand. Can Reunion again, discarding Cavalier in Command. Next turn we can potentially double spell, look for that Offspring's Revenge. It is somewhat tempting to shatter now, because they don't get to draw the card from the ability. Hmm. 
I guess now that we drew another one, I maybe should, since it does slow them down quite a bit. If I didn't draw the second Shatter, I think I would have just uh, double spelled here. We're getting to the point where we can maybe just hardcast Arkhan next turn. It's not going to win me the game by itself. But it can maybe buy me a bit of time. So... I think we'll start with Thrill discarding either Reveler or Land. I think I'm leaning Land here. Wanderer, also very good. Alright, let's play Reveler still. So we still have 6 mana for Arkhan if we want to. Or we can play the Wanderer. Wanderer can be a bit of a nombo with Arkhan, since of course a 3-3 can be exiled with a minus 2. Symbiote's attack for 4. I'll take it. I might just play Wanderer and exile Umori if they don't play something big. Dirge Bat to shrink Omori into a 3-3, so it doesn't die to the minus 2. Nice play. But at least we made them use the Dirge Bats. So it can kill any of my uh, reanimated creatures or Dracoseth if we just hard cast it. Kills the Reveler. And we'll pass. There's Uluna. Gets to kill the Wander with the Dirge Bat's ability. See you and finds a Shore Shark with Iluna's ability. So it looks like a good time to cast another Shatter. And now we've got Arkan and Dracoseth to fill up the board again. Iluna finds Parcel Beasts. At this point, I think I would rather just try and hardcast Dracoseth. So let's try and hit our land drop here. I guess I could just play Passage and potentially cycle the Triumph. Derek's 6-6, six, six, so it doesn't die to Drunkoseth. Hmm. Could be better to play Arkhan first. Or I can go Drunkoseth, and if they don't kill me, I can uh, Arkhan to shrink this down and kill it with Drunkoseth. It's probably better. Probably keep a land in hand. Another Dirge Bat would be bad for me. Another Sterix. Finds Shark and lands. Alright, so they can't attack me. Arkan will shrink them down. Actually, what I should have done is attack, deal damage, and then play Arkan second main, because then I would have dealt four more damage with uh, Dracoseth. Yeah, we'll hold two lands in case of Cathartic Reunion. So I missed out on four damage, hopefully it doesn't matter. Gem Racer, just a 3-3. Three, three. Alright, there's a Reunion, so glad I held on to the lands. And find an Offspring's Revenge. 
which can get back. Probably another Archon. Alright, so the miss damage did not end up mattering in the end. On to the next one. We're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck, so probably cycling. This hand doesn't have uh, the Wanderer, but we do have a Clarion, which sometimes isn't even good enough if they have the turn 1 Flourishing Fox. But luckily we dodged that bullet. So this is fetching up a mountain, so we can play Reveler turn 2. Clarion does line up quite well against the Rescuer. Sometimes the opponent will think we're a Blood for Bones deck and they will prioritize killing the creature, which also works out well for us. Alright, if I don't run untapped land, the fox could get out of range of the clarion, which would be bad for me. And yeah, no untapped land, so... Could get a little punished. Honor the God Pharaoh does make another Chum Blocker to absorb some damage, hopefully draw into a Shatter the Sky. A Rescuer attacking as well. I'll trade. Get a swamp, I think. Alright, so casting Clarion, not the best here. We just deal with a bunch of tokens, so we'll honor discarding. Probably not a Dracoseth. Don't see myself hard casting this anytime soon. And then we gotta hope to draw into Shatter the Sky. Because reanimating a Dracoseth next turn is not going to be enough to beat this Flourishing Fox. Would love to find a Wanderer to exile the Fox and then be able to command. So eight cards in graveyards. Alright, so I can't even cast Cavalier since I'm missing triple red. So this is Offspring's Revenge, get back, I guess, Reveler to chum block with. But they probably have double Zenith Flare here, so it doesn't matter. Zenith Flare face, down to four. And Zenith Flare face once again. So yeah, that's why we really need the Wanderer in this matchup. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Geruda deck. Definitely a matchup for Shatter the Sky is key. And the opponent will also help us fill the graveyard if we do eventually find Offspring's Revenge. 
So just gotta try and hit our land drops with these reunions. Hope to find a revenge at some point. Or maybe Commander Dreadhorde to combo with the Wanderer. So we've got the lands we need. Migration path. So next turn they'll have their Geruda. Probably get rid of the reunion instead of a land here. All right, so there's a revenge. Turn 4 Shatter, turn 5 Revenge. Hopefully that's good enough. Opponent's down to 2 cards in hand. And interestingly, they cast the Geruda from hand instead of from a Companion. I guess we'll just wander then. They didn't mill anything useful on my end. Usually there's more than one Giruda in play after they cast it, so the wonder is not enough. But this time uh, it was. There's the clone effect, and Andre's Foreigners can kill my wonder as well, so I'll probably have to shatter before we revenge. Alright, opponent decided to go for Thassa instead. Flickers Giruda. But now I can use the Wanderer to exile Thassa. Before casting Shatter. Ooh, they hit my Arcan. Could actually be annoying, because then the Wanderer no longer does what it's supposed to. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to kill the Thassa, sadly. Now, by getting my Arcan in play, they do make it so my Dracoseth is potentially better. So I could, like, get back Dracoseth with Revenge, killing uh, two Gerudas and, like, a token, and then I can use Wanderer to exile the Arcan as well. But then Dracoseth will have been dead already. And if I exile the Archon first, then Dracoseth can't kill the creatures anymore. So at the end of the day, I probably just cast Shatter and move on. And hope they're out of Gerudas. Alright, opponent concedes. That works too. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing an Omori Mutate deck. Hands fine, I've got the Shatter, which is quite good in the matchup. Wanderer should be okay. Just waiting for, I guess, the mana to cast Cavalier. Or uh, another way of discarding it so we can reanimate it later. Fable Passage might end up getting Basic Swamp, or it could get Mountain to help cast Cavalier. I could postpone the decision for now. Opponent has one card left in hand. So the Shatter is going to catch us back up. The last card is Asterix, that's a pretty good one. But they're still gonna be empty handed once this is all over. I guess I'll draw one from the Shatter, so not entirely. Empty handed decides to keep the Asterix on defense to protect from spot removal, but the Shatter's still gonna get them. So 
So we haven't drawn into black mana or another red source for Cavalier. So I think, given that I don't have anything to reanimate yet, we'll just cast Cavalier, discard a bunch of stuff, and hope to draw into another black source for revenge. I'll hold on to one copy of the Wanderer. Alright, so we've got the Wanderer Commanded Red Horde combo, which we might be able to pull off. Opponent can now activate their castle to draw a card. But I could also cast Revenge. Alright, our opponent concedes. I think I would have gone for the Wanderer into command since that's a sweeter play. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. What do we think of this? We've got the Wanderer command combo, but we're probably gonna end up discarding them to the reunion to set up revenge. I guess we'll try it. Turn one Flourishing Fox, all right. I guess I'll hang on to the Wanderer now. Still got a discard too, so we'll get rid of Command and Arcan. Or I could get rid of Revenge and just rely on Wanderer plus Command as the Wombo combo. Nah. All right, Dracoseth, not a fine card to discard. Alright, that can get my white mana sorted. Probably want to fetch now so that I have the option of also casting Shatter the Sky if we draw another white source. Stinger. So they didn't play into my Wanderer here. And I can't cast Shatter, so this is pretty annoying. Now playing the Wanderer could still be fine here, because it also prevents the damage from Stinger. And if they cycle in response to get the damage from Stinger, I can now exile the Fox, and that's what they did. And then Ruffler plays defense. Alright, so I guess it worked out. And then we're just waiting for a land. Rescue. Make the two of them. Perfect. Get back Dracoseth. And our opponent explodes. So, yeah, this kind of showcased the Wanderer nicely in the cycling matchup, being able to deal with Flourishing Fox, prevent damage from Stinger, and of course Zenith Flare is the big one, which can otherwise finish us off even if we're super far ahead on board. On to the next one. On the play, facing a Lurus deck, so if this is a cycling deck, the Wanderer should be quite good. And we've got Clarion for cheap removal. And if we're on the play, it's usually enough to kill a Flourishing Fox on the draw. It's not always the case. But of course, a Wanderer can deal with the Fox as well. Turn one planes into Alsate. Alright, so it's not a cycling deck, but probably the Mono White. Put a bunch of auras onto a creature deck. Think I'm just gonna pass. Clarion could be good depending on the situation, but I can maybe wait until end of turn to decide with a thrill. Starfield Mystic. Alright, so now Clarion looks pretty appealing. 
So I'll probably just discard, I think, Raveler. And then if they do load a creature up with a bunch of auras, we've got to wander to take care of it. I guess we'll play Reveler, although Hateful Eidolon indicates that they're playing Deadweights and Myers Grasps, which can kill the Reveler, but kind of got to dig towards another Sweeper here, or a Dracoseth. Can reanimate Reveler with the Offspring's Revenge. Opponents looking at their graveyards. It's gonna be Heliot's Punishment. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll play Revenge. Cavalier is a better one. Ephemia can make some zombies. So I wouldn't mind another sweeper at some point. Interesting, so I could honor discarding Cavalier. Is that better here? Or I can Cavalier discard like Plains and Wanderer. And then Revenge doesn't do anything this turn. Well, let's go big. And then I can get back Cavalier discarding probably my entire hands. And then I can use the ability... Alright, that's a nice hand. Attack with all. Put in trades for Cavalier. And takes 4 damage from the ability. And do I play land? Yeah, if I draw land I might just cast Cavalier and activate it. Bowden still hasn't cast their companion. If they do, it might be a good time to cash in the Shatter. It's gonna be another Eidolon. We'll get a Swamp here, so we have double black. Yeah, I think I'm into... Cavalier just discard my hand, or I can just discard only the Revenge. And keep uh, Shatter as insurance. Or I could wipe the board first, but then of course Lurus is still a problem. Now we'll do this. Alright, double shatter, so revenge can get back Arkan. And then uh, I always go full control to make sure I don't mess up. Before attackers we can activate Cavalier. And is it safe to attack with everyone? Opponent would have to trade, so... Seems fine. I guess they're dead if they don't have anything, even if they block the zombie and gain three here. Alright, sweet. 
so Cavalier plus Archon got the job done. No need for Dracoseth. So in conclusion, Revenge Reanimator, still a pretty janky deck trying to play some expensive cards, which isn't always allowed in standard, so don't expect it to perform at the highest levels of competitive standard, but still a pretty fun deck and an interesting take on the Reanimator archetype, which is always focused on getting back Agent of Treachery otherwise, so by playing the Revenge you're kind of forced to focus on different colors for once, and we got to see the Harmonious Archon in action, which otherwise hasn't really seen the light of day in standard, so overall, I would say a successful experiment. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.